Hey everyone, so I'm going to do a video on experiments and random assignment and why random assignment is so important to include in experiments. So the first thing I want to talk about is things that we need in our experiment. The first thing we want is to know that there's going to be a response variable, an explanatory variable, and subjects, and a treatment. The response variable is the outcome that you're measuring in the study. The explanatory variable is what we think would cause the response. This is actually just the, another way of saying the treatment. So if you're thinking explanatory variable is like the treatment, you're right. Because a treatment is what you put on the subject to see what happens. And what will happen is the response um, in an experiment. A treatment is any specific experimental condition that is applied to subjects. And if it has several explanatory variables, a treatment of, is a combination of those variables. So this means we can have more than one treatment in one study but them all together, the, all those treatments together, stands as that one street treatment. Um, you'll often see explanatory variables called the independent variable and the response called the dependent. We learned this was x is independent and y is dependent in math. You guys have learned that before. So if you were to plot your data, x and y, x would be the explanatory, x for explanatory, and y would be the response. Okay, so there's another few terms that we want to go over in this lesson. Random sample. This implies that you are taking a sample that was randomly selected from a population. A random sample is very important because it tells you that you're doing a random selection. Random selection refers to randomly assigning a sample from a population. So what this means is you're randomly selecting people from a population, and those people are now going to be your subjects in the experiment. Then we're going to use random assignment. So random selection and random assignment are two different things. Random selection is when you take a selection of people from the population. You take that selection, and then what you do with that selection is you split that section, selection up into two equal groups by randomly assigning them to two different treatments. Okay, so usually let's say that the population was like, I don't know, a million people in a town or a city. Um, you would probably select something around maybe, I don't know, um, 100,000 people. And then what you could do is pull that 100,000 people out and then just break them up into groups of 50,000, randomly breaking them up into groups of 50,000. This randomness is key because when you have randomness in your study, you're allowing yourself to do a few things. Random selection allows us to generalize our results to the study. So it says right here, random selection allows us to generalize to the population. This is very important. You always want your sample to behave like the population. As long as you have random selection, you're ensuring that you have that generalization factor. Random assignment is an added piece to experiments. Random assignment refers to you randomly assigning the selection of people that you already have to two different groups. You need this random assignment because it allows you to conclude cause and effect conclusions in your experiments. You can only conclude cause and effect with experiments, nothing else. Only an experiment has this random assignment in there, which allows you to have two groups that have no bias because you're breaking up the people randomly and this will allow you to have a nice cause and effect conclusion in the study. So we've had a few things that we've talked about, experiments, observational studies, um, and surveys. Um, remember, an observational study, a survey is a type of it. So I'm just going to write the word survey underneath here. Um, I'll use a different pen so you guys can see that. I don't know why I'm using the highlighter. So I'm going to write survey underneath here because a survey is a type of observational study, except you're just um, asking questions. That's your only interference. Okay, so in experiments, we must have random assignment. Random assignment is a must-have in experiments because if we don't have random assignment, that means you're not randomly splitting up this group of people into two different groups, and therefore you will not allow to conclude a cause and effect conclusion. What is really nice in random um, in experiments is to allow us to have random selection. Now, I'm putting this in parentheses because you really don't have to have this in an experiment, but it's really good because if you have random selection, you can generalize to the population. Um, but if you're just given a group of people and that's the group of people you have or things, um, you must at least randomly assign them if you're going to do an experiment. 
Observational studies, you should have random selection so you can generalize to this um, population. You don't need random assignment because random assignments is only in experiments. That's the only thing random assignment will be in. Um, allowing generalization to the population is random selection. That is the only thing that will allow you to generalize to the population. Without this thing, you cannot generalize. You need random selection to generalize. Just like how you need random assignment to have the cause and effect conclusion. So you can kind of see that this is why we need random assignment and experiments because it allows us to use this cause and effect wrap up conclusion about our study. So I, I have one example from the lesson in here um, just to talk about why random assignment is so important and how we can you know talk about an experiment together. So it says a researcher wants to determine if the yield of corn is different when the soil is treated with one of two different types of fertilizer. So the yield of corn is like what you're looking at. This is what we're, this is our response. Yield means like how much corn you're gonna get. Um, the crops that you would have, which is the corn, will yield out something. So it's your, your response. Um, Different soil is treated with one of two different types of fertilizers. This is your treatment. They actually even say the word treatment here. Um, so that's our explanatory variable, and our dependent variable is our response, which is the corn, the yield of the corn. Um, the researcher has 16 acres of land located beside the river that have several trees that walk along its bank. There are also a few trees on the north acre side of the 16 acres, and the land has been divided into 16 one-acre plots. These plots are to be planted with the same type of corn, which is really important. I'll talk about that in a second, um, but can be fertilized differently. At the end of the growing season, the corn will um, yield will be measured for each plot, and the mean yields for plot will be assigned to each fertilizer, and they will be compared. So here we go. You can tell that this is the yield of corn is what be, it's what being measured, so you, that's also a really big um, hint that that's the response. But what is the subject? The subject are the plots of land. These are your subjects, because that's what's getting the treatment. The subjects are getting the treatment. So the plots of land are going to either get fertilizer A or fertilizer B, that's your treatment, and then you're gonna get a response from that plot of land. Either it's gonna give you a lot of corn or not a lot of corn. But there's are, there are a lot of um, outside factors that we wanna keep in mind here. If you can notice, there's a river and there's trees in different areas and there's no river here. So these are outside factors that we want to keep in mind because if we only plotted fertilizer A here, for example, on the left side and then fertilizer B on the right side, there could be some outside factors telling us why fertilizer A may have given us more because it's closer to the water. That means it might have more, you know, um, hydration to those corn plants. Um, also, the trees could also be an outside factor because they could make us have like some sort of shade issue with our crops. Um, here, there might be an issue because there might be too much sun. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we evenly distribute the different types of fertilizer in this plots of land. So what we want to do is use randomization. And the best way to randomize something is using something called a random number generator. And you actually have one on your calculator. So um, on your calculator, you will see that if you press math and you go over to probability, you will see rand int no rep. This means random integer, no repetition. Integers mean number. Um, I couldn't get this on my calculator because I need the pro version, but I did it on the one um, I have at home, and these are the numbers I got out. So what I'm gonna do is I have 16 plots of land. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the first eight numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna assign those to fertilizer A, and then I'm gonna assign the other eight to fertilizer B. This is completely random because I'm using a random number gen generator, which means that I'm spreading the treatment randomly assigning the treatment to different plots of land. This will avoid bias and it will avoid any outside factors on the fertilizer um, that we're planting. So looking at that, let me just make this a little smaller so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So the first one is number one and we say that that one is going to be A. Um, and then three would also be A, five would also be A, um, six would also be A. Seven, um, 
Hold on. So we got 1, 3, 5, and 6. 9 will also be A. Um, 11 will also be A. 13 will also be A. And 16 will also be A. Now, by process elimination, all the remaining boxes are going to be B. So B, 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 B. Okay. So let's just make sure I did this correctly. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight A's and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight B's. So now this is completely randomly assigning fertilizer A and fertilizer B in my experiment because I used a proper random assignment method. I used that random number generator. Now let's talk about this. Let's see how nice and even I spread my data apart. If I draw a horizontal line and a vertical line, I can kind of analyze this. If I use the, um, let's do the horizontal line first so we don't get confused. There are one, two, three, four plots of land with A above it and one, two, three, four plots of land below it with A. So this is a good thing. This means that I was able to randomly um, assign the fertilizer and also do this evenly. And now um, my conclusion, if I did find out that A had a better yield of corn could be a proper cause and effect conclusion because we, when we use random assignment, we're allowing for all those outside factors to not come into play because um, we have a few plots of land near the water, we have a few plots of land away from the water. So this is a good, this is a good thing. And you can also see that if we split it horizontally, there's a good distribution of plots of land Um, sorry, vertically, we read it horizontally. If I look at it vertically, I can see that there are um, one, two, three, four, five on the left with A and three on the right. So not an exact split, but it's still a good dispersion of the different types of fertilizer. So because we did all this randomness, um, we can now conclude that there's a cause and effect relationship between the fertilizer and um, the you know, yield in the corn. So the last thing is the summary slide. Um, an experiment is something that you investigate with to compare the effect of a treatment on a response. The subject is the participant in the experiment. So in the last example, that was our plots of land. The response is um, the variable that is not controlled by the experimenter is what you're measuring. So in the last one, it was the yield of corn. The treatments is the conditions which the subjects are randomly assigned to. So in the last example, that was our fertilizer. Random selection refers to randomly selecting samples from a population. Again, this allows you to generalize the population. Very important. This fact is huge in this type of lesson. Um, and random assignment, also super important. We need to have this in experiments. Um, it allows you for cause and effect conclusions. Um, and the purpose of random assignment is so you create similar groups um, for the treatments of the experiment. And that way, if you have similar groups, you're not going to have any outside factors coming into play.